Hey guys, so today we're going to take a look at one of the projects that I have currently got on the, the burner. Wow, can't talk. Um, as well as some of the tools I'm going to use to accomplish this stage of the project. So over on the blog, we have an intro to comic craft step-by-step -step series going on, which I highly recommend if you are into comics, you check it out because I go really in depth with my process and I give a lot of ex explanations and I provide a lot of links and resources and examples. So I really think it is a great series and I really hope you'll check it out. Um, as part of that, I'm going to share with you guys my current work on Cicada Summer, which is an autobio comic that I am going to try to pitch. So I have here my folder that contains the majority of my information. There's one character design in my sketchbook, but everything else is in this folder. So to begin with, and this is a little out of order for you guys, but to begin with, when I realized how little time I had, because I'd been spending a lot of time working on Ink Drop Cafe stuff, and so um, the deadline for this sort of crept up on me, but I'd been planning on doing it for over a year. So I already knew sort of what kind of comic I wanted to pitch, what sort of art style I had in mind, where I wanted to set it. So um, I made an outline of all the things I needed to do, and well, and then I went in and I made an outline of all the events that would happen in the graphic novel in general. And then I picked my favorite one in order to expand it into a pitch. So Crawfish Boyle with Extended Family and Picky Yoon Exploring the Woods with Cousins is how it started. So then I expanded that out. Crawfish Boyle Exploring the Woods, Two Hour Drive to Picky Yoon, had Game Boy Color, had to share with Devin. Arrive, quick hugs from Nana Ants, immediately see Cousins out. Uh, my family had moved to Texas, see them rarely, want to catch up with same age boy cousins, immediately saddled with a baby because Becca likes babies. Uh, crawfish boils, uncle and dad crowd around the huge pot outside, kids want a live crawfish. The lucky survivors made a pet, dads have to chase kids away from the pot. Um, and then an, an illustration of the crawfish boil page. When it's ready, everyone's chowing down on paper plates. Demo of how to peel crawfish. Kids throwing crawfish bits at each other while adults clean. Kids go play in the woods. Parent freeze lucky crawfish in pond. And then maybe the end for that. So after I expanded it out a little bit more, it's time for the script. And the way I do my scripts is I write um, a synopsis and then I break that down into pages and then I italicize the synopsis for that page and I uh, tighten that into the script itself. So for here, um, this is the crawfish boil page. So it's illustration of the anatomy of a crawfish boil, maybe a scene with labels. And then I list some of the things I wanted to include. This is all in italics. This was all from the synopsis. Then I have where I sort of fleshed it out a little bit. Overhead view. Scene of dads and kids standing around the yard with everything labeled. View is from near the pot so we can see the seafood clearly, but the picnic table is also in the shot. Dad finishing a joke. And Thibodeau says, May Boudreaux, that thermos is broken. I put my cup of coffee, some gumbo, a hunk of French bread, and even a scoop of ice cream for dessert. Expecting a nice lunch, but all I got was a mess. So um, it also includes dialogue. Um, although I am a comic artist, I am also a writer. And um, having worked with writers who think artists should be able to work from platform, which it's like, wow, so you think the artist is going to write this for you. Um, I like to make it as tight as possible, even if I'm writing for myself. And then I have an illustration. This is sort of like a rough thumbnail of my thumbnail. I have kind of a weird process because I have two types of thumbnails. So over here are my thumbnails. I printed out a template sheet and you can read all about doing that over on the blog and find template sheets for you to use. Um, and I just sort of sketched it in. And this is rougher than my normal thumbnails would be because I have 20, 20 cousins to draw. That's like a crazy number, right? I have 20 cousins to draw and I'll show you guys that in a minute. And I just did not feel like drawing super details on all of them. So to help differentiate one person from another, I put an initial on their forehead. And would you guys believe that my mother, my father, and my brother all have D names? So I can't put a D on everybody's forehead. So D for Devin, M for mom, DA for dad. And no, I'm not that stupid. Dad is not the D name. My dad's name was, was David. Um, and I also label from the back view. 
and I've got enough pullout shots that you can sort of see the environment. But over here you can see I sort of drew outside the panel. And the red are notes from one of the people who beta read the script and beta read the thumbnails. So once I've done all my thumbnails, I scan those, I send them to people for critique. Here's a couple of environmental, oh and they got caught together. Environmental sketches. Um, this is set at a real place, but I don't have photos from it. And my grandmother sold this property shortly after my grandfather died. So um, I can't go back to it. Um, and so here today we've got the roughs. These are the blue lines. So I printed these out using a um, water based printer. It's like a, a Canon Pixma Pro 9000 Mark II, um, which is actually pretty expensive. They've gone up, so I can't necessarily recommend it. And I went ahead last night and I did all of the borders for all the page. So today I'm going to be working on drawing this page. But I wanted to show you guys the character designs. And I actually did a video where I designed three characters for you guys. And these are all really basic character designs. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. So I want to show you guys the base character design. And since this is an autobio comic, that would be me but <laughs> but it's me when I was 13 and I fictionalized a few things and I drew it in non photo blue and I actually ran out of non photo blue shortly after here's my younger brother Devin here's my father Dave there's my mother Denise and what I did I did these on tracing paper and so I would tape them down as you can see in that other video I would tape them down and then base the height off of my initial design and as I worked my way through, I just taped various characters down. So that's three. Then here's my grandmother, my aunt, one of my many aunts, one of my uncles, who's actually my grandfather's son, so he's my mom's brother. That's another three people, so now we're at seven character designs. Then. I did this branch of the family, and they're all in red. So, um, and these are not in order necessarily. I did Jesse, who should be shorter than that. He's my height, and he isn't, was not my height at that age. And then one of his, his older brother, so the eldest in that family, and he's a short dude, so. And then my same age cousin, and then their younger sister, and then their baby brother, and then their mom and dad. And that's five kids, two adults, seven, so 14. We're at 14 character designs there. And I organized the family by color, so I used color LEDs to my advantage to help keep everybody on track. And then finally, we have the green family. And I usually design the parents last, because designing adults is boring. So the eldest daughter of that family, she needs to be shorter too. Her younger brother, their younger sister, the mother with the youngest child who is like a year old, and then the father, so that's two, nope, I'm sorry, three, so six here. So six plus 14 is 20. So yeah, I did you 20 character designs for a 12 page comic which is crazy. Please, if you can help it, don't do that to yourself. So today, we're I'm going to start doing the roughs. And I'm going to do one rough, at least one rough. On some days, I'm going to push for two. One rough per day, every day for the next 12 days. Then I'm going to scan them all, send them off for corrections, print out the blue lines, and then pencil and ink one page every day for 12 days after that. And any day that I can get two pages done is a red letter day. So the tools from here on out, your basic tools are going to be a ruler. I like using a clear ruler. A non-photo blue pencil is my pencil of choice. And then a lead pencil, and I like to use a softer lead because it kind of goes on top of the non-photo blue a little bit better than harder leads do. Those tend to want to skip. Uh, you might also want some extra paper to give yourself room to do your perspective grids, or and some blue tape would also be helpful. All right, guys, so I've got everything I need here in front of me. I have some blank cartridge paper. Just This is just inexpensive copy paper. There is no finish on it. You don't want to finish on your paper if you're using this for your roughs. I've got some blue painter's tape. 
I have my character references, which I'm actually going to put off camera because I have a limited amount of space on my tabletop. So I'm going to put those off to the side. You guys aren't going to see those. I have my thumbnails and script, which are both important to have on hand when you're working on your roughs. I've got that clear ruler. I've got my rough for today. I've got my pencils. And I've got a variety of erasers. A couple mono erasers, um, a mono stick eraser, and I thought I had a Pentel click eraser somewhere. Aha, here it is. All right, so um, if you are interested in a tutorial on perspective, I have one in my intro to comic craft series here on the YouTube because, uh, on the YouTube, because that is something I feel. All right, so um, I have done a few videos on how I go about roughs. So I highly recommend you check out my Intro to Comic Craft playlist for that. Otherwise, I'm just going to be covering the exact same material here. But I do want to talk to you guys a little bit about forms of construction, constructive human anatomy. So those of you who watch this channel, you know I have a very, very cartoony sort of anime manga inspired style. Um, so you might think that I don't really need to use construction or you might if you have a similar style or if you want to have a similar style you might think you never need to learn human anatomy and I have to say that is the furthest thing from the truth. Um, even the most stylized cartoony styles have a basic system of drawing, a basic system of how they handle the characters, how they think about the characters, how a character is handled consistently, shot after shot or page after page. For me, mine is actually fairly closely based on human anatomy and I highly recommend you check out the Glenn Vilpu drawing manual. I was recently notified that it is no longer available on Amazon. So um, you might want to like watch the listings. I think they're redoing the book, um, maybe a new edition. And so they've pulled existing listings from the internet. But if you do get a chance to get a hold of it, or if your library has it, and boy, that would be a great library. Um, you should definitely check it out. And it is combined with what I learned in Paul Hudson's Constructive Human Anatomy class at SCAD, and it's a grad level, oh, no, it's an older, older um, student slash grad level course, um, which is no longer being taught, unfortunately, but I, well, it's taught by Dove now, but I really feel like Paul was the, the, the guy to do it. Um, um, it was a great course, and even he was like, you have a really cartoony style, why do you wanna, Learn constructive human anatomy because you can always get better. Uh, stylized, cartoony, simplified style. They're they're still based on how a human is built, but it is just less. Um, you're using less detail. So I'm going to slap in a quick perspective grid. I'm gonna go ahead and draw in that horizon line, which tells me that little brother is actually too high up because he and I have the same, you know, this packet of paper which doesn't belong there. He and I have the same eye line almost, and in this story, he's like, hmm, I'm 13, so he's eight, so he should actually be shorter. And I'm going to use the lines I sketched in to serve as sort of a guide for how I'm going to render this car window and this is a Dodge Intrepid from 93. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in my perspective and I'll meet you guys when I'm ready to talk about human anatomy. <laughs> 